Th thank you very much all for coming. Uh, my name is Arthur Bergeron. Uh, I've been doing presentations now here for a while. I even see some people that I know. Um, um, for those of you who don't know me, um, I work at a firm called Myrick O'Connell. There are 60 of us there. There are 20 lawyers in Westboro and 40 in Worcester. I do nothing but elder law uh, because every, they do all the rest, the other 59 people. So the goal of today's presentation is to really kind of talk about well, it's to really talk, and for those of you who've seen my stuff, it's to talk about them. It's to talk about my friends Frank and Mary. Um, they are my typical clients, they and their children, Peter, Paul, and Mary Jr. I always tell people if you, know, if you get that joke, you're old enough to be talking in the, for me to be in this class. Um, and, and their goal is very, very simple. Um, they're getting older, they're retired, they're living in their house, and they want to live in their house until they die and be buried in the backyard. That's their goal. Right? They don't ever want to leave. They don't want to go to Florida. They definitely don't want to go to a nursing home. They just as soon not live with their kids. They don't really want to go to assisted living. They may have to, but they really just want to stay in their house you know, and continue to enjoy it. And their situation is they own a house. They got a house worth about $300,000. He's got an IRA worth about $150,000. they have got an annuity worth $100,000. And they've got bank accounts worth $75,000. So they've got total assets of about $625,000. They're not fabulously wealthy, but they're okay. Mortgage is paid. Frank's got income of $2,000 a month, $1,500 from Social Security and $500 a month from a pension. Mary, who didn't work is, it, when she was younger, she was raising the kids, is, gets half of Frank's. So Mary is getting $750 a month from Social Security. And their question is always, so how do we keep kind of getting along? Now, it, and they're still healthy. They are still healthy at this point. Uh, but they're living home and they are slowing down. And, and they want to be kind of knowing what, they should, what else they should be doing, what else they should know about. Now one of the things that they should know about if they live in Natick, and I'm going to talk about Natick because Susan Ramsey, who is the head of the Natick Council on Aging, I, I invited somebody to specific, talk, talk, specifically talk about councils on aging. She ends up being two rooms down right now doing another presentation because the schedule has got shifted. But I want to talk briefly about Natick because Natick is symbolic of, actually Natick's one of the great councils on aging right now. I mean they've got a, a very, very a wonderful relatively new center which is a combination uh, senior center and community center like Ashland has and like several communities have. Um, and their mission is to really get, in, get everybody involved that can be involved from that community. Um, they, they have a large pop, population, but not unusual. 20% of all the people age 60 or older in Natick, or, 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 or in Natick are age 60 and older. So they're trying to encourage all those people. And they have, and they have a whole set of programs, but you're going to find, if you talk to the folks at your senior center, that these programs are very similar to those that are offered at your senior center. There are typically a lot of programs involving exercise, music, technology. There's always a variety of these kinds of programs. You're also going to find, through your senior center, access in many places to transportation. The, one of the biggest things that regularly seniors are talking to me about is the fact that they want to be in their house, but sometimes they can't get out, right? Sometimes they, they, either they can't, they, they're having trouble driving, or they'd rather actually be going with a group of people. Um, as tax season comes up, tax prep is very big right now. Every one of the senior centers has a shine counselor. The shine counselors can help you figure out one of the great puzzles of life. I just turned 65 this year and actually had to read and learn about Medicare. Oh my God, this was like very complicated. And Medicare D, and Medicare D. And as you all know, the date for your plans coming up is like right now. Like this is the season for you to figure out whether you need a new Medicare D plan. As I always tell folks, the way, when you're shopping for Medicare D plans, what I do know is don't just look for the cheapest one. Look for the one that's got your drugs in it. So many people buy a plan based on how expensive the plan is and then realize it doesn't cover their drugs. So they've got a real problem. But you can find all of that at the senior center. Um, they have a number of wonderful partnerships. They're very active. You should get involved with them. The senior center is one of the two organizations you absolutely have to know about. They're your tax dollars at work. The other one, is Bay Path Elder Services. Um, so raise your hand if you've heard of Bay Path Elder Services. Raise your hand. Oh, well, see, now a lot of folks, you folks have. Uh, inevitably, when I'm doing these presentations, a third to half of all the people there don't even know what Bay Path is. Uh, Bay Path is the place, they are the people who, through which all federal and state elder dollars go. 
on their way back to you. So Bay Path is the expression of your tax dollars at work. So you want to know these folks. Um, this state is divided up into 27 regions. Each region is covered by uh, an entity called an Aging Services Access Point or an ASAP. Bay Path Elder Service is, Services is the ASAP here. Here from Bay Path is Sharon Silvestrano. I hope I pronounced her name right. Close. Just to, t <laughs> to talk to you a little bit about Bay Path, mm -hmm. Sharon. Okay, so I'm Sharon Silvestrano, nurse manager at Bay Path. We put services in the home so that people can stay at home. We service 14 towns. We service all the boroughs, Natick, Ashland, Holliston, Hopkinton, Sherburn, Sudbury, Wayland, what did, what did I leave out? Natick, all those towns. Um, Everybody who is here is in one of those towns. So um, again, we put services in the home. We put homemaking in the home. We put companion in the home. We put um, personal care, home health aid in the home. We use contracted vendors. We do not actually hire the people. We, use, we contract with vendors who hire the people to go into your home. They're, they're all quarry checked. And um, if you, if, depending upon your income, as we spoke earlier, um, is dependent upon what kind of services that you get. With Home Care Basic, you get three hours of service a week. So um, you could use that for one hour of homemaking, two hours of, of personal care, someone that helps you get a shower. You could use it for um, a medication machine. You could use it for uh, a PERS, which is your emergency response. Um, we put $300 of services in your home per, per month. Um, you would, it, it goes on a sliding scale and you would pay anywhere from nine dollars to, um, depending upon, again, on your, on your income, you could pay 100%. Um, we also, at Bay Path, we not only take care of elders, though, we take care of, of children to elders, and our name says Bay Path Elder Services, but I, I think we'll be changing that in the future, because now we take care of children on the personal care um, attendant uh, assistant program, and what that does, if you have Medicare and Mass Health, you can, can get money to pay for, for to, to help defray the cost of, of your, of your health care. What happens is in, a, in that case, you need someone to be a surrogate who will do all the billing. And someone from Bay Path will come out. It's usually an, an, an occupational te therapist with a nurse. They, they evaluate you. They evaluate your medical condition. They decide depending upon how much hands-on care that you need, and that's hands-on care. It can't be just supervision. Um, they, for every little task that in the home, from walking to the bathroom, walking to the car, to be able to go to the medical doctors, the state will give you so many minutes. So depending upon that, the OT and the nurse decide how many minutes that you'll be able to get. They send that into the state. The state sends it back, and they say, yes, you can have 24 hours of care. And then you find your own caregiver. We have the adult foster care program, which allows you to take care of, of your loved one in the home. And depending upon their medical conditions is dependent upon how much you would get paid for that service. Um, we also have uh, care transitions. Care transitions is, is a program to try to cut down on readmissions to the hospital. And uh, a, a care transition worker will go out to see you in the hospital, empower you to make the right decisions for yourself, to care for yourself, teach you about things that are important for you to be looking for so that you don't get readmitted to the hospital. And with that program, we have actually decreased rehospitalizations. And that's good for the, the hospitals because Medicare is, will start paying for readmissions especially with certain diagnoses like congestive heart failure, chronic lung disease. Um, we have the money management at, uh, at Bay Path. Money management um, gives a volunteer to you. They match you up. And um, that money manager can help you do your bills. If you are having trouble with, with payment of your bills, that money manager can help put you on a budget. 
That service is for free. You have to be below a certain amount of money in the bank. I think it's less than, I think it's either 40 or $45,000, but um, you, we can also do a, a, a pay for that, a fee for service for that. Um, we have the Ombudsman Program. The Ombudsman Program is a big volunteer program and it is the liaison in the nursing facility. So if you are a, a, a resident of a nursing facility and you ha are having some problems in that nursing facility, some things that are not working for you, you work with the ombudsman and that ombudsman will work with the facility. We have Meals on Wheels and, um, yes, and, and, And so we, we bring meals to your home. If you need more than five days a week, we'll go ahead and put frozen meals in. We also give you a frozen meal in case there's an emergency. Um, and there are congregate areas where, in, usually in um, your Council on Aging, your, your senior centers, where they have meals at noon that you can go for. Those meals are, 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 are Voluntary donation of three dollars, um, and um, the same thing in the congregate. We have healthy living classes, and those classes are for people, and they're usually held at senior centers, um, places like that. And um, it's healthy living, chronic disease management, matter of balance. Um, what else do we have? See, you can see that we have a lot of programs at, at Bay Path, and it's not just for the for the elderly. We have the Caregiver Support Program. That program works with caregivers out in, in, the, um, in the homes in case they're, they're getting overwhelmed. I mean, caring for someone is very overwhelming. And you find that they're the ones that get sick, the caregivers. Tired, they have other responsibilities. They're taking care of their moms and dads. And, um, sometimes 24-7. You know, their moms and dads get up during the night. If they have Alzheimer's, they're sundowning. They've, they've flipped the switch on whether it's night and day, and they're up during the night. Um, so we also have long-term long care options. Long-term care options will help you speak to you about what your options are for long-term care. Um, care in the home, care in a nursing facility. Um, we service 60 and older in the, in the um, home care side, or if you have a diagnosis of, of Alzheimer's and you're less than 60, then we'll, we'll service you in the home care program. Otherwise, you have to be 60. But the other programs, like PCA, adult foster care, are for less than, than 60 years old. Um, we are available 24-7. We do have on-call, but we are there from 9 to 5, Monday through Friday. You can call intake and referral, and they'll give you all the answers that you need to have. And you're, not, you're not a small agency, right? Oh, how many, you, we, we um, hire, when I first started there in 2008, we had 50 employees. We have grown so that we, now we have about 110. Yeah, and they are, they are really considered to be, and I'm going to try to hold all questions until the end because I want to make sure that all, you hear everybody, but they are really considered to be one of the cutting edge um, uh, aging services access points in the state. Some of the stuff that they're doing, like some of the stuff tr trying to reduce readmissions to hospitals and working with people at home is just and terrific. Then, and then we're going to do dementia friendly. Um, we're not going to talk about that. Okay. That's next year's okay. program. Oh, all right. You're not going to tell them about that. Um, <laughs> Um, I get, but the bottom line, it, as far as Bay Path, like the senior center, this is a, don't call them when there's an emergency. Call them like now. Get a sense of what the programs are that these folks offer. Um, the, 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 the program, I'll just give you that example. How much, how much through your regular programs doing home care, how much in services are you are able to provide per month? What's uh, the dollar amount? Home care is, is um, three hours a week. You, you, would, you would give in a figure though, this kind of a pack, $300 a month. So I'm, I'm just, no, I'm just gonna get to this slide. It, it, remember that Frank and Mary slide? So there's the income of Frank and Mary, right? So they're not making nothing. You know, they're making about $30,000 a year, right? Um, so they're making about $2,700 uh, a month. So um, 
the, 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 the home care program that she was just talking about is not asset based. I think, I, I, I can't repeat this enough, it's not asset based, it's only income based. You get services up to $300 a month. The maximum, co the, the, the copay, if you're Frank and Mary, making $30,000 a year is $100 a month, right? So you're getting basically two thirds off for the services that you're getting in your home, even though you're making quite a bit of money, and no matter what your assets are, no matter what your assets are, that's just an example. That I get that once again, the theme of this is talk to these people. They are your tax dollars at work. Um, now I want to talk, now I'd, I'd like to, another piece of staying at home is really making sure that the health care that you need when you go to the hospital and then you get out of the hospital and come home is going to be available. Um, and that cluster of issues around health care. The Natick VNA is now not just called the Natick VNA, and, and I'm not going to try to get all the names right, so I'm going to have Deb, Her Deb Hershon talk to you about Natick VNA. But just like Baypath is really cutting edge, so have they been in terms of the traditional VNA had very, very limited services. They kind of show up when you get out of the hospital and see if everything was okay. That has really expanded. But the, the, the VNA and the, most, most of their services or many of their services are simply paid for by Medicare. These are, these are not private pay services. And you're going to be f going through those services really to allow you, even as you get older, as you just tend to get you know, sick more. Not everybody, but some folks, right? To, to know that you can get sick and get well and get back home as opposed to getting sick and not coming home, that's really the job of the VNA. So Deb, can we talk about that? And I'm going to give you my, 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 uh, my clicker. My, this is my total technology, right? <laughs> that's forward. Okay. That's backward. That's all I know. Everything Perfect. else. Are so my name is Debbie Hirshon. I'm a registered nurse with the Native Visiting Nurse Association. I'm also a care transitions coordinator, which I'll explain in a little bit. And I'm the executive director for our private company, Distinguished Care Options. So when you come out of the hospital, or even if you go to see your physician and, and just you, you need a little extra help at home, that's where home care comes in. There are many home care agencies to choose from, but why would you choose the Natick VNA? What sets us apart? Real people. How many people call places that can get automated systems all the time? Press one, press two. When you call the Natick VNA, you get a real person every single time you call. Our intake center has registered nurses who all have extensive home care backgrounds. We also have administrative staff in our home care um, intake uh, center. Um, and care navigators, such as myself and my partner, Trisha St. Martin, who she is also a registered nurse and care transitions coordinator. So when you call and you have questions and you're just lost in the system, we're there to help you, guide you through where to go, we can always call the doctors for you to get referrals for home care services. And our favorite motto is, people will, will forget what you said, people will forget what you did, but people will never forget how you made them feel. And that's really our goal at the DNA. The last four years, we have been in the top 500 agencies, and this past year, we received five-star rating from the Home Health Compare. They get all of their data from the Center for Medicare and Medicaid Services. And we're very proud of that. So care transitions coordination. I am care transitions coordinator. That's me in the middle with blonde, as a blonde. <laughs> <laughs> so when you're in the hospital or you're in a rehab center or you're in a skilled nursing facility and they say to you it's time to go home, it's just mind blown. You have no idea what to do. Your families get very confused, trying to wade through the system. That's where we come in. We would come to the hospital. We would meet with your medical team. We'll meet with you, with your family. We will figure out exactly what you need when you come home. And we will help transition you home from the hospital or from wherever you are. We'll make sure that all of your services are in place for when you get home, um, including equipment if you need it. We can call the pharmacies for you. Um, usually when you first come home from the hospital, Medicare will not pay for a nurse to come out that day. And it's always that day or that night that things seem the worst when you come home. They give you tons of meds, they give you those cards, if you've ever been in the hospital with the little bubble packs. 
and they just throw everything at you, you go home, and then you're there, and you're, you're sitting there, and I have no idea what to do with all of this. I would make a courtesy visit to your home. I would help you get through all of your meds. We'll get everything straightened out. You'll know exactly what you're supposed to be taking, and then the native DNA nurse will come the day. That's a courtesy visit? That's a no-charge visit? Um, I'm, I'm the representative of the cheap seniors. They, no, they never say it, but they're, they're always thinking. So what is, to right? To me, that is the most important time when you come home. You want to succeed at home. You've been in the hospital. You may have been gone from there to a rehab center. You may have been there for weeks, and you just want to be at home. But you, you don't want to fail when you get home. You want to make sure when you get home, everything is in place. So that's where a care transitions coordinator plays a vital role in your care. If you call us at the agency, you're, you've been newly diagnosed with some kind of cardiac issue, hypertension, you feel like you need a little extra help at home managing your medications, you're not feeling well, we will call the physician for you, we will get that referral for you, we will get all the services set up. So these are just some of our clinical programs. We have telehealth monitoring, where we would bring a machine into your home. It's a very small monitor. It would monitor your blood pressure, your heart rate, and your oxygen level. That monitors every day, and it's transmitted over to a nurse every day who monitors that. The key thing about our telehealth program is it keeps people out of the hospital. We can see if your weight is going up, if you have something called congestive heart failure, if you're putting on fluid, if your blood pressure is going up, and then we can call your physician, let them know what's going on, maybe adjust your medications, maybe you need to go back in to see him, but it's a, it's a vital role in our care, and it's a standard of care. It does not cost anything to you. How do you, how do, you do that? Does some, do you connect the person to the machine? Nope, somewhere? it's a little machine. You walk over, you does sit it, at a table. Does it talk to you? It talks it, to you, you come press on, a button. It, it really yeah. talks to you? <laughs> you press a button and it says, good morning, Mrs. Jones, <laughs> and it tells you it's now time to check your vital signs, and it will tell you step by step what to do. Put on the blood pressure cuff, it, you just press yes or no, it will ask you questions on how you're feeling, um, it's an amazing, amazing piece of technology. And for us, it has decreased hospitalizations for our patients. We have our palliative care program, which I'll explain in a little bit. We have three certified wound care nurses, um, and we also have a certified ostomy care nurse. We have two social workers, a dietitian, certified home health aides, which come from our private company, Distinguished Care Options. And we have the Metro West Meds program, which I'll also explain. So these are our services. Of course, the nursing service, um, we will come in, as I said, take care of your disease management, your acute illness, as well as your chronic illness, um, post-surgical recovery, or as I said, just coming from the physician's office, you've been newly diagnosed, you're very overwhelmed, we will come in for that. We have therapy, physical therapy, occupational and speech therapy, a medical social worker to help you adjust to your illness. Uh, maybe you need some community resources as like Bay Path. We can come in and help you get, just wade through all of that. Our telehealth program and we have a palliative care program, which is family centered for those who have been diagnosed with life limiting illnesses. And this program absolutely helps to improve your quality of life. Our Metro West Meds program assists underinsured and uninsured people to access their medications um, through a variety of programs. We have medication cards that we can help you with. Um, the person who runs it, Susan Moriarty, is wonderful. She can call the drug companies for you. Uh, it's just, it's an incredible program. And all of these are covered by insurance. The Metro West Meds program, there's no charge for that as well. So now I'm gonna talk a little bit about our private company, Distinguished Care Options. Um, it's a sister company to the Natick VNA. We have certified home health aides. We have companions, nurses, homemakers, therapists, covered by long-term care insurance, the VA benefits, and it's self-pay. 
So let's say you've been on service with the Natick VNA and of course with Medicare and insurance. You know, you're only allowed to have us for so long, but you still need that little bit of extra help, especially from a home health aide, helping you get in and out of the shower safely. We can continue that privately and you can keep your same home health aid that you had with the Natick VNA, which is nice. The services go over seamless and you don't notice any interruption. Our home health aides, as I said, are all certified. Um, all of our staff through the Natick VNA and uh, Distinguished Care Options have all been dementia and Alzheimer's disease trained. Um, they all have Cori background checks and they're supervised by a registered nurse, which is me. Um, our home health aides are all CPR certified. We have palliative care certified home health aides as well as rehab certified home health aides. This is our service area. As you can see, we cover a very large area. Um, yep, 25, about 25 towns. Um, if you need any help, any questions at all, we have a table set up outside. Please stop by, get some information, and um, we're there to help. Thank you very much, Thank Steph. Oh, no. uh, let's see, I'm going to leave this here. So, to, so the point of a lot of this, I'm going to go back to what I said about <coughs> Baypath and what I, what I said about the Senior Center, is you want to know about this and about what they offer and whether you just feel comfortable with them, like before the, before the problem occurs, right? Before you're at the hospital and the hospital is telling you when you get home who you're supposed to have see you when you get home. Because you want to feel like you're connected ideally with, with, the, with, the, with the VNA or with the entity that's Medicare, that's, that Medicare will pay that you really feel comfortable with. And I think that's, that's the point of this, is to truly get, get an understanding of what these programs are. I mean, ideally, you're seniors, which means you've got a little spare time, may not, you know? So this, just go stop in. I mean, you guys are close. You're right here in, you're right in Natick. That's why they call them the Natick VNA, right? Just there, you're right in Natick. Um, si similarly, I just want to, um, there, whoops. Did I just jump? Um, around the clock healthcare. Um, Susan Weinstein is, is, is here from around the clock health, home care. Uh, a lot of the clients that I have are folks who are, as they're getting older, just need some help at home um, and they want to be able to stay at home. And without that kind of help, it just might be more dangerous for them to be at home. Um, and so you, and, and there are a number of players out there that who, are, who, are, who want to be providing that kind of home care for you, you want to be kind of getting to know who they are. Um, one of the, the, the unique ones is around the clock home care because it, it's, it's an agency that was really started here in this area. I think they're in Southboro now uh, and also cover this area. Uh, th these are, so you want to get a sense of what their program is like, of what they're saying they're offering. And then once again, and before there's an emergency, you want to be talking to them. Before there's an emergency, you want to be talking to them. So, Sue, can, can you talk to, to us a little bit about Around the Clock? Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay, so you I need this. Once again, forward. I, I always like showing off how much I know. Forward, <laughs> backward. All right, that's good. All right, so I can actually kind of go through this kind of quickly because I work with these folks and we complement each other. So we've worked with Baypath. We have a lot of Baypath clients. We're a private duty home care agency. We're a family owned business, so we are the private pay piece of this. So when you need more care than the few hours you would get through Baypath, um, we actually coordinate our caregivers with them as well. So you may have a caregiver that you get through Baypath and you want a few more hours around the clock can add to those hours and again we will be seamless with the caregiver. Um, and, and are you also, do you also provide caregivers for Baypath? We provide yeah. caregivers for, oops, backwards, for Baypath. Come on now, I gave you my lesson, forward and backwards. Yes, I know, I'm sorry. Yeah. Um, so, you know, I'm again talking about home care choices and we have um, the medical, which would be like the Natick VNA, which we don't offer. Then we have the non-medical home care agencies and hospice. We all work together to be known as home care organizations. And because of the you know, increasing demographics, there's a lot of demand for all of our services. So again, there's the home health care, which would be paid for by Medicare or private insurance or long-term care. 
and then what we do is the non-medical home care, which we would provide homemaking or companionship. So the home health, you would um, have a doctor's order and have a need for some skilled services. So we can complement that, or if you don't need skilled services and you just need some basic support for every day, it might be general safety supervision. You've been in the hospital, you're coming home, you're not necessarily coming home in the same condition that you went to the hospital. Again, for the transition, we have a special program. We have RNs that oversee all our private care. But you may need just some safety. You know, maybe you're just a little weaker, you're coming home with a walker. You might need some help with dressing and bathing, maybe some laundry, some, you know, household items, um, medication reminders. So again, we all coordinate together to offer all these services. So we are basically private pay, but a lot of the long-term care policies will cover our services, but you really need to look at the policy. Policies that were you know, acquired many years ago, you have to look at what they cover. Some may have a wait period, um, they may have a limit, and they may have certain um, parameters for what services they cover. But we will work with you if you have a policy. So when you want an, the private piece to, again, complement what Baypath or Natick VNA, um, you have options. You can go with an agency like mine. We are a family-owned business. Or some folks decide to hire somebody on their own. You might have a neighbor that can help you out or a family member. What you need to think about is working with an individual, what, is there a backup plan? What happens, you know, you've got your neighbor Jane helping you, what happens when Jane gets sick? Is there somebody to help you? So when you work with a private duty agency, all of the caregivers are our employees. So we've done all the background checks, just like Natick VNA was telling you, we do the quarry checks, we do local background checks, we do nationwide searches on background checks. So you can feel confident when somebody comes in your house, you know, we have um, screened these folks. We do a lot of training and supervision. There's always constant training. You know, we do training on um, memory issues. We do training if there's a hospice need. Um, and they're all overseen by nurses. So again, you just need to think about when you're hiring somebody on your own, or going through an agency. So going through an agency, we have all the obligations of payroll taxes, workman's comp issues, um, unemployment insurance, and peace of mind, again, because we've done all the background checks and the interviews. Um, so, you know, just kind of go through a checklist when you're thinking about bringing somebody into your home. Have they been screened? Have they been interviewed? You know, what is their history? Um, another thing to think about when you go with an agency, like I said, if there's you know, a problem with your caregiver, we have somebody on call 24 seven that will answer the phone and provide a different, you know, an, a backup caregiver if need be. So I've actually left some brochures and I've left um, some brochures there that talk about the concerns when hiring a private agency versus hiring somebody on your own. Thank, Thank you. you very much. Is this you? That is me. Yes. And, and, I'm, gonna, and I'm actually going to have some type of questions also, but I, I just want to kind of finish up. So, and so why, do you, why would you need to talk to your lawyer when you're getting older? Well, now, the, the answer to that is really to do those three things. Um, while there are estate planning issues that you may be concerned about, those all occur after you're dead. What you really want to make sure is that while you're alive, nothing really bad <laughs> happens to you. You need three things in order to do that. You have to make sure you have a health care proxy. Many of you may have that. Remember, remember, no one has the right to make your medical decisions for you unless they are your proxy. That includes your spouse. That includes your spouse. And especially, it, does, it includes your kids. They can't make decisions for you. You need to have a proxy. You need to have a power of attorney so that somebody can sign documents for you. I just talked to somebody last night who said, literally, I don't need a power of attorney. I've taken care of all this. My kids are jointly on, with me on all of my bank accounts. You know, why do I need a power of attorney? And I said, well, for example, you go to the hospital, you're gonna get admitted to the hospital. Now they wanna discharge you from the hospital so you can go to, for rehab. 
the rehab facility won't let you in the rehab door unless you can, unless you can sign in and sign an agreement with them. If you can't sign that agreement, your power of attorney has to sign that agreement or you can't get in the door. Someone has to have the ability to do a power of attorney. The MOLST form, raise your hand if you know what a MOLST form is. Raise your hand. Oh. Medical orders for life-sustaining treatment. That, that is the advanced version of the DNR, and it's replacing the DNR. Your doctor, if you tell them you want a do not resuscitate order now, they're gonna say, no, we don't do those, because the Department of Public Health wants these. You wanna go through these with your doctor. The important thing to know about these forms, they are medical orders from your doctor. They, he's the person or she who has to sign the document, because they are instructions to the people farther down the food chain, the EMTs and the nurses, et cetera, saying, what you've been trained to do, which is to bring this person back, don't do it. One of the most interesting things about the MOLS form, in addition to dealing with the do not resuscitate question, which means your heart has stopped, does some, is somebody going to try to push through your ribs to your heart to start getting your heart going again? That's resuscitation. That's very unpleasant. You want to decide if you want to do that, especially given the fact that for people over 70, the number of people, the percentage of the population over 70 that gets that and lives for more than 30 days is 5%, 5%, right? So you really want to be sure you want to go through all of that only to know that that's the way you died, right? In unbelievable pain as they were trying to do this. Another piece of that is intubation. Do you really want, if you're not breathing, to have someone stick a tube down your throat into your lungs and push air into your lungs to try to get you to breathe? The third one that I'll just mention, which is on this form, is do not hospitalize. Do not hospitalize. You can, through this MOLS form, Instruct the EMT who shows up at your door because you're passed out and you're dying to not bring you to the hospital because you want to die at home. And that's what Frank and Mary want. They want to die at home. They don't want to die in the hospital, right? So you want to consider doing that. Um, if Mary ends up in a nursing home, you should all understand, Frank, in this situation that we've given you, could immediately qualify her for mass health. So you don't have to do any of this advanced stuff. You don't have to give your assets away, wait five years. You don't have to do any of those things because you can do that all at the last minute. And you know, for folks who have been to presentations of mine, you know that, that that is always the case. The only thing I'm gonna mention to you that you wanna consider, um, first of all, don't throw away those old long-term care insurance policies that you bought like in the 1990s and they look like they're worth nothing, right? One reason is because the best part of the long-term care policy often is the home care option that is provided that Susan was just talking about and that Deb was talking about. The second thing, though, is if you're Frank and Mary, remember, half of your assets were your house. Half of your assets were your house. They had a house worth $300,000. Everything else put together was three twenty-five. dollars That's not uncommon. If you bought a policy before March 15, 1999, and that policy says that it will pay a nursing home $50 a day for two years. That's all. $50 a day for two years. And you then go to a nursing home and want to qualify for mass health. Well, you know, if you're older, you know the drill, mass health, you, get, you spend all your money down and then they're going to put a lien on your house. In this case, they won't put a lien on your house. If you have that policy and it's still valid, if you have at least one day's worth on it, but you say to yourself, boy, that's a long time ago, March 15th, 1999. Well, if you bought a policy after that, all you have to do is have a policy that says that it pays $125 a day for two years. If you have a policy that says that, and you go from your home to a nursing home and want to qualify for mass health, you can qualify even though you own your home, they won't lean the home, and they won't have any claim against the home after you die. This is a big deal. So if you've got one of these policies, you want to keep it. Well, I just talked to somebody in the Frank and Mary situation. They had this, and they, one has died, so they can't shift all assets to the other spouse. The other spouse is going into the nursing home, or is, 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 I shouldn't say it, is getting sicker, is getting sicker, has dementia. And they, she was in with me with the kids. And I said, well, you know, one thing you could do, you got this little policy. They got one of these little dinky long-term care insurance policies. I said, sell your house, buy a new house for $625,000. Spend all your money on the new house. Live there for a month. And then you can go to the nursing home and, the house, and everything's safe. Right? Because you've got this little long-term care insurance policy which says they can't lean the house. I, I do a lot of work on Martha's Vineyard in Nantucket where everybody's house is worth more than $625,000. I said, that's all you need to do. Just buy one of these policies. Your house is safe. So 
it's an unusual little exception to the general rule that, that these long-term care insurance policies are just way too expensive and not worth it, okay? Thank you very much. You know that there's some time between these sessions, so if you've got individual questions of any of the people who are here, you can ask them. Could I ask for a quick round of applause for my guests? Thank you very much. Thank you all for coming. If you're interested in the assisted living stuff, that's what we're going to talk about next in the next session. Thank you.